compressibility and elasticity. So when we animate a water balloon uh, bouncing, you notice that there's quite a bit of uh, squash and stretch in the shape of the water balloon. And uh, one thing we might wonder is, uh, what about the volume of the balloon? Well, it turns out that most solids and liquids are almost completely incompressible. Now what that means is that it takes an enormous amount of force to change their volume. Now, a water balloon easily changes shape since it's mostly liquid, but the uh, volume uh, does not change because uh, water, as most liquids, is uh, very incompressible. Now, uh, let's look at a demonstration of this. So uh, I have a syringe uh, with air and I put a brick on top and you see the air is compressed and if I add more weight it's compressed some more. Uh, this is a demonstration of, of Boyle's Law uh, for air that as I increase the pressure in a gas the uh, volume decreases. On the other hand a liquid uh, such as water uh, is nearly incompressible so I put the brick on top and uh, there's virtually no volume change. I add the second brick again uh, no change in the volume. Uh, so Now the measurement of the compressibility of a material is called the Young's modulus and this indicates the amount of force that's required to uh, compress it or to uh, stretch it. So, uh, now, a material such as rubber happens to be uh, very compressible, so it has a small Young's modulus. On the other hand, uh, water has a much larger Young's modulus. In fact, it's um, almost as large as wood and bone. So water is um, nearly as incompressible as wood and things like concrete and steel are even more incompressible. They require even more force uh, to um, change their volume. So uh, one of the early styles of animation was the so-called um, rubber hose or rubber band style and we saw that in the uh, Betty Boop uh, Snow White um, cartoon that uh, the characters often not just not just stretch but they actually uh, change their volume as if they were uh, rubber. So Now uh, if we want to do a realistic uh, animation of a water balloon then we want to capture that the fact that uh, water is incompressible and so to uh, stay on model with the uh, water balloon uh, it needs to keep a constant volume. And in fact uh, since most materials are incompressible you want to uh, preserve volume um, you know, unless you're actually animating uh, actual rubber. Now uh, talking about uh, bouncing, uh, most things will lose some height uh, when they uh, bounce. So we see this um, ball which uh, has an impact and then when it bounces back up it doesn't quite reach the uh, same height that it started from and with each bounce the, the height is somewhat lower. So there's loss of energy uh, with each impact on the ground. Now the characteristic that indicates uh, how much uh, height is lost with each bounce is the elasticity. Uh, now a rubber ball uh, is rather elastic and so it uh, bounces uh, fairly high when it's uh, dropped on a hard surface and it doesn't lose that much uh, height with each bounce. But so does a steel ball bearing or a golf ball. 
Uh, they are also elastic. Uh, they also retain most of much of their height with each uh, bounce off of a hard surface. Uh, but the steel ball and the and the golf ball are very incompressible. So you should not confuse elasticity with compressibility. Rubber happens to be both compressible and elastic, but uh, steel is uh, very incompressible and yet it's also elastic. Now, uh, something like a ball of Play-Doh, when it hits a hard surface, it uh, doesn't really bounce at all. So it is, it is inelastic. Uh, however, Play-Doh is uh, also incompressible, so it um, may change shape somewhat on impact, but it does not uh, get larger or smaller in terms of volume. Now, interestingly, uh, water is actually elastic, and uh, you can see this from the fact that when you uh, have a drop of water that hits a hard surface, the splash uh, actually goes quite high. Uh, the, uh, of course, the water droplet doesn't uh, preserve its uh, shape after the impact, but uh, still a lot of the um, energy is preserved, and we see that from the height of the splash. Uh, you also see that in other phenomena like uh, being able to skip a stone off of a surface. And uh, this tells us that the water balloon, because of the elasticity of the water, uh, actually tends to bounce uh, rather high, uh, especially compared to something like a flower sack. Now, uh, the measurement of elasticity uh, is the coefficient of uh, restitution. Uh, so this measures the elasticity on a um, uh, impact for a bounce. So uh, depending on how elastic or inelastic a material is, it will lose a certain percentage of its height on each bounce. So uh, nothing is, is perfectly elastic, but a uh, golf ball is, say, more elastic, uh, so it loses about a third of its height per bounce. Uh, something like a steel ball bearing is still fairly elastic, but uh, somewhat less so, so uh, it loses about two-thirds of its height per bounce, and, and something like a ball of Play-Doh is uh, very inelastic, so it loses uh, essentially 100% of its, of its height. So, um. Now, uh, looking at these pictures of bouncing, you may notice that the distance uh, side to side that's covered on the bouncing uh, is smaller with each bounce. This mostly has to do with the fact that because the height is lower, the time in the air is lower, and so uh, it doesn't travel as far in the air uh, with, each, with each bounce. The horizontal spacings uh, are mostly uh, staying the same. Now, we uh, can preserve bounce height in a variety of ways. If we have, say, a moving surface, like someone uh, bouncing the uh, ball off of a tennis racket that they're uh, hitting the ball up, uh, then it can preserve height. Uh, also, if a ball has a lot of spin when it hits the ground, some of that energy in the spin can be transferred into uh, sending the ball higher, uh, or even, say, a character uh, pushing down with each bounce can uh, uh, change the uh, height. Now, interestingly, the uh, path of action with each uh, bounce has an arc which is a duplicate uh, of the uh, higher bounces. So we can say uh, very easily create um, a lower bounce by uh, copying the upper part of the arc of a previous uh, bounce. Uh, we, uh, if we want to put a little bit of variety here, we can uh, stretch the um, lower bounce in the horizontal direction. So we can we can stretch it horizontally or compress it horizontally to change the horizontal spacings, uh, but we shouldn't touch the vertical spacings because those vertical spacings indicate the acceleration of gravity, and we don't want to be uh, 
changing the strength of gravity from bounce to bounce. Uh, similarly, the motion graph of the arcs on bounces uh, are duplicates. So here this is actually some data from um, looking at the position of a bouncing ball on frame to frame. And when we look at the height uh, graphed against um, uh, time, uh, so each dot is a different frame in the video, uh, you see that uh, the different parabolic arcs are um, duplicates uh, of each other. So consider the uh, following question. Suppose that we have a ball that uh, due to the spin happens to bounce like this. So it goes up, then down, then because the ball has some spin, it happens to come up to the same height and then come down, just not go as far. So uh, if uh, that's what we want to animate, is the motion curve, say in the graph editor, does that look like uh, what I've sketched here? Yes? No? Uh, maybe yes, maybe not? Well, the answer is no. Uh, the reason the answer is no is that uh, because these two bounces go up to the same height, on the motion curve, they have to be the same number of frames. Remember that the, um, the amount of time in the air depends uh, only on the height, and so because these two uh, go up to the same height, they have to be uh, in the air for the same amount of time, so these two have to be um, duplicates. Uh, now the motion curve for the horizontal uh, position on each frame uh, will be different for the uh, first bounce than the second bounce, uh, but um, not the motion curve for the height. So in summary, uh, most uh, liquids and solids are very incompressible. Uh, rubber is uh, a solid which is actually compressible, so if you have a character's volume changing, then it looks uh, rubbery. Uh, elasticity is not the same as compressibility, so there are many things that are fairly elastic, uh, but that doesn't mean that their volume changes, uh, say, on impact. Uh, elastic objects uh, bouncing on a hard surface uh, tend to retain most of their energy after the impact, so um, they uh, bounce uh, fairly high. Um, the more elastic they are, the, the higher they will go. But with each bounce, since nothing is perfectly elastic, they are still bouncing uh, somewhat lower with each bounce, uh, but that amount is the same percentage uh, from one bounce to the next. Eventually the, um, the motion uh, stops. It doesn't um, bounce forever, but um, that, uh, you know that. The Vertical spacings in a parabolic path of action um, are the same with each um, bounce, and the parabolic arc of the motion curve uh, for each bounce has the same shape. So remember, these vertical spacings in the path of action uh, and the uh, parabolic arc on the motion curve, the shape of that parabolic arc on the motion curve uh, both of those indicate the acceleration of gravity. So you don't want to be changing the acceleration of gravity from one bounce to the next. That, uh, that will be very noticeably um, unbelievable. So hopefully that explains uh, some of the issues about um, objects uh, squashing and stretching as they bounce.